12.30, I have uh, Attorney Bill Notes who will join me. But for now, um, I've heard from a lot of people, uh, some of you suggested that, in fact, I should talk about uh, the award that I received on Monday, uh, the Led Freedom Ring uh, Journalism Award at, uh, on Martin Luther King Day by uh, the Rainbow Potion, Reverend Jesse Jackson. And I want to kind of talk about that in the context of uh, our collective struggle. And, and in fact, when I received that MLK uh, Freedom Ring Award, I said I was receiving it on behalf of uh, the many voices, on behalf of those individuals who do not have a voice and who feel like, in fact, their opinions do not matter or their opinions don't count in the larger discourse about quality of life in the city and, of course, across uh, the nation. I said that I was receiving that award uh, in my um, acceptance remarks that, in fact, on behalf and in defense of press freedom, on behalf of those journalists who are often referred to as fake news reporters and so forth, because I think, if anything, uh, the First Amendment uh, is even more pronounced today and more significant, uh, not only because it is a constitutional requirement in a constitutional democracy, but that it is important and significant for reporters and writers to do what they're able to do. But in the context of our collective struggle, so here's the deal. So I, I write and I speak for a living, right? So um, that's what I've always done. And I believe that, you know, as a, as a writer, as someone who tries to use words to explain uh, what I call the human conditions, to explain the debilitating impact uh, that people go through as a result of sometimes ill-conceived uh, policies uh, made uh, by politicians and those in government. Uh, someone who tries to explain those uh, those kinds of policies to people and, and take a position on a number of issues, uh, you know, that politicians uh, drive, uh, it, it is significant. I think the work that I do is serious because I believe that, uh, you know, the press and us who are in that space, you know, um, us who are in that space under the banner of the First Amendment have an obligation uh, to explain to people and to tell people, you know, the issues and to explain those issues to them, uh, to explain the consequences of the issues that politicians put out here, explain the consequences of the policies that elected officials formulate, because that is what we do. And I take that role serious, and I've said a number of times, and I think I've posted this on Facebook, I don't write for artists, you know, I do not write to please people. I don't write for recognition. Uh, you hardly see me do that. I, uh, I don't write to be honored or to be awarded. I don't write because I want to go to dinner with somebody. I don't write because you know, I want somebody to recognize me. I don't write because I'm looking for an invitation to be you know, in the in crowd or to be at a high profile they are gala and so forth, you name it, or to MC. I write out of a deep conviction. A conviction that, in fact, that those of us who have the pen, you know, who put words on paper, you know, who explain the human condition to people, we have an obligation to tell the truth and nothing but the truth and, and let the facts play out, you know, let the facts lead us to where they may lead us. And that is important for the work that I do. And that is where I come from because I believe that uh, the media, the press, has an inescapable responsibility to become light in darkness. The press has an inescapable responsibility to shine light in a place of darkness. That's why sometimes you hear the phrase that the media is the first light in a democracy because we're expected to explain to people, not to get them confused, but to let them know about where things are and what kinds of issues you know, are being pushed around, what kinds of policies are being made. And so that is why I do what I do. And I think, um, you know, and I don't only speak for me, but I think I speak for many other journalists. I speak for many other writers. I speak for many other columnists in the space that I am in, that in fact, we do this not because we're seeking recognition, not because of optics, not because, you know, we feel like, you know, you know, we, we, we want to do this, but because it's out of a conviction. And, you know, and you may not agree with what we write. You may not agree with what I say. And I know a lot of people don't agree with what I write. Some people think that I push the envelope. Some people think that, you know, my columns have created trouble. Some people feel like, 
You know, why are you calling this individual out? You know, why are you, you know, can't you just go easy on, you know, this so-and-so person? Can you, can't you go easy on this elected official? Well, that is not what my job is called for, right? Because a lot of people are out there who believe in what we write, who believe in what we say. And they have a, there's a trust factor here. Because in my profession, I think uh, once you lose the trust of the public, it's over. And the public trusts us to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And that is so significant and so important for the business that we're in. So I'm not in this business to write and please people and make somebody happy. You know, I'm not in this business to basically cheerlead. I'm not a cheerleader. You know, I'm not an extension of someone's communications apparatus. You know, I'm not an extension of someone's press department. You know, I mean, we're called to be independent. We're called.